One thing that is part of every surfer's journey is going from riding the foam to getting out there on the face. What we're talking about here is catching an unbroken wave or a green wave, as we like to say. So in this video, we're gonna get Clayton to really unpack how we can go about making that transition. Now, whether you're a beginner or whether you're an intermediate, I guarantee you there is gonna be some gold in this video that you're gonna absolutely love. So let's dive into the video. Okay, so Clayton, catching an unbroken wave or a green wave. This is the transition that most people go through when they've been learning to surf, they've been riding that foamy, and then they want to get to that point where they're then riding along the face of the wave. Yep. So you're saying that we can break this down into, into five simple steps so that people can really sort of get a grasp as to how to go about this. And the first part is positioning. Yes, so um, we always say that catching waves are catching a bus. Yeah. And you've got to be at the bus stop. Yep. So if we can go into coach's eye, and I'm just going to track this back. So you can clearly see over here the white water map. So potentially this wave kind of did this, this little wave did this before it closed out, and this wave is just running over here. So there's multiple places that you can catch this wave. Mm. If you took off over here and rode there, it's going to close out and you can't make that section. Yeah. If you took off over here, the wave runs across and then it runs in and then on the straight, but it closes out. Yeah. So what we mean by taking off at the bus stop is by positioning yourself on an apex, okay, where you can go left or right, left or right, and have the opportunity to catch that wave okay so step one position so we can look at the foam that's in the water to work out whereabouts we need to sit the the second part is about people waiting so here i try to do a simulation of me frantically paddling so I see the wave coming. Now, a common mistake is people just start splashing and paddling. Now, the more you, the harder you pull, you just create bubbles. Mm. It's kind of like the reason why people drown is because they start thrashing the water and they can't get any purchase. If you swam slowly, you'd actually be able to stay above the water. Yeah. So that thrashing doesn't give you any more speed. If you paddled slower, Slower would be smoother and smoother would be faster. So okay. very important. Now the second thing is why you're busy thrashing, you don't know what the wave is doing. Mm. So it's important to actually know when the wave is approaching so that there's no anxiety. Third thing, you can see I've got my chin down and I'm over paddling, that causes me to nose dive and wipe out. And that's a common mistake with people is they over paddle They've got very little posture and they wipe out. Yeah. So when you say wait and don't paddle ahead of the wave, what is it that you, what is it that you actually mean here? Look at the coach's eye. So I can see the wave coming. Now, if I had have had my back turned to that wave, I'd be anxious and I wouldn't know when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So just by knowing when things are going to happen, it gives me time. I'm actually sitting and waiting, yep. which means I've got time to burn. Now, as I can see the wave approaching, I know that there's going to be a point on this wave where it's going to lift me. So I lie down and I wait. There's the lift. Because see how my feet are flat and it starts to lift above my head? Yep. That's the lift. That's the indicator of your rides about to commence. Mm -hmm. So I lean back. See, so arch, arch your chest up, so chin right off of the board. So see the lean back there? Because look, my feet go flat again. I glide in. So again, it was just a couple of strokes. It was one stroke. Look at the big back arch. This mm -hmm. is the Oreo biscuit where I'm keeping the tail down so the wave can push me forwards. Yep. 
then I can gently stand and I just got to look where I want to go and point my hands where I want to go. And there you are, right in the, the green face. If you have a look at myself paddling in, look at how high my chin is off the board. Okay, so what I'm endeavoring to do is to keep my tail in the water so the wave can push the tail forwards. Yeah, which, which we can see when you go underneath the water. This it, it's, it's bit blows my mind. Correct, okay, so, so you can actually see my tail is, is, is quite level. So if I was dipping my head down, the tail would almost be at that angle. Yeah. So by me leveling the tail, what actually happens there is the water underneath is, is pushing the board up and is pushing it forward, giving me drive. Now you can clearly see the board almost starts to accelerate at this point there. So I could just go, boom, and just, get, and just gets fired out. Yeah, so probably the best way to explain it, if, you're, if you dropped something onto a treadmill, like you know the, the treadmill that guys run on, yeah. if you dropped something on, it'll just get whipped off. Yeah. And that's almost what the wave is doing. But you have to be at that part of the wave where it's lifting and pushing you to be able to get that. If you do it that way, catching a green unbroken wave is really easy. Now, if you paddle it in front of the wave, you're not gonna get any assistance. Mm. And that's where guys are flailing, trying to get real, real strong paddle power. Um, you can never paddle at the speed of the wave. Um, it's, it's virtually impossible. It's, it's actually scientifically impossible. But as soon as the wave has an inclination, you can accelerate up to like 30, 40 kilometers an hour down the wave face and create planing speed. Mm. So creating planing speed on the steeper part of the wave is more important than over paddling. Yeah, and, and so in order to achieve that, what, what we need to do is we need to tap into to the wave's energy plus then that, I suppose, once you've taken off, you, you then get, get the speed going down. Yeah, so you don't have to pop up fast. You don't have to paddle hard if you're positioned mm. at that bottom of the wave where the wave's lifting you up and giving you energy. All you've got to do is go into what I call an Oreo biscuit, which is basically arch your back, yep. glide for a few seconds, and then stand. Yeah. So first of all, position yourself. Second thing is weight. When you see a wave coming towards you, don't start paddling ahead of it, like frantically paddling. You wanna sit and you wanna wait for that wave to come in until you feel the lift. Yes, now that lift's a good thing, it's not a bad thing. Mm. So once you, once you feel that lift, you also wanna be, so you wanna be looking at the wave, but then you wanna be focused on whereabouts do I wanna go. Correct. We've got some footage of you uh, surfing a bigger wave. Have we got you from the takeoff? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's bring that up. So you'll notice it's quite a bit bigger. I'm, I've almost kind of like disappeared. So there's a, it's quite a bigger, but more stronger wave. But you'll notice that I don't paddle a lot. I just glide in. Okay, there's the back arch and I take my time, but I'm engaged in the wave looking at where I want to go. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people over paddle and they almost end up ahead of it and the wave breaks on them. So I take my time. Then when I stand up, I'm again looking at where I want to go. Look at my body language. My knees are pointing where I want to go. My chin's looking at where I want to go. And I actually point my hands kind of where I want to go to. Then I can get the work done. Boom, and do a nice big turn. Yeah, nice. Okay. But again, no tension on the paddling. I'm not, I'm not splashing or making any, any bubbles. I'm just literally gliding using what we call the Oreo biscuit technique. So we're a much smaller waves here. This is the kind of thing that, that, that if you were a beginner, you might be looking at waves this sort of size here. So, and what I like about this is you're seeing the wave coming, you're spending more time looking at the wave. 
and as soon as you feel the wave lift you, so you can see the swells coming, there's a little bit of a lift, you hop onto the board and you only arch your back. Yeah, so there was, so there was, there was no paddle at all on that one there. So I was positioned in the right place. I waited for the wave to reach me, which, which is real. I, I can't stress this enough just from the amount of coaching that Clayton's given me, and that is to really wait for that wave to pick you, to pick you up, and actually start to move uh, to, to move you forwards. So, Ant, imagine if you had your 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 head sort of on the nose of the board and, and you sort of angled down it. Yeah. What actually happens is that swell picks the tail up, your head pushes down, and you end up nose diving and doing a cartwheel. I'm doing a flip over, yeah. But when your tail is flat in the water, if the wave cannot lift the tail up, it actually pushes you forward towards the beach. Mm. Yeah, and the Oreo biscuit technique is, I mean, that's something which is included in the Accelerated Surf program. I think there's also a video within within the, um, within the, the, the Facebook group that sort of explains a bit more about the Oreo because that's a separate video in its in in itself. But those are the five those are the five steps if you were to break it down as to how to go from riding a a ball of foam into riding a green wave. First part is positioning. Second part is learn to wait for the waves. Third part is look not only at the wave uh, as it's coming in, but then look at whereabouts you want to go. Third part is wait for that feeling, wait for that, that, that lift, and once you feel that lift, it's then engage, whether that's a couple of paddles and the Oreo, or even just the Oreo on its own, which is that arching the back up, pop up, look about you wanna go, and you'll be riding on a green face in no time. Now, before we wrap things up, there are a couple of myths and mistakes that people make. First one is, and you've already mentioned it, so many people think that you need to paddle really, really fast to catch a wave, which we've proven with the video here that you don't need to paddle. And that comes from probably your surf school, um, where the guys are going, paddle, just to create some momentum, otherwise the foam is just gonna wash over you. Yeah. All you do is you, you tire yourself out, you create anxiety because you can't see where the wave is. Um, and it's, it's actually proven with um, Rob Case, yeah. He's done some studies on this and it's impossible to paddle at the speed of a wave. Yeah, Rob, 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 Rob Case has done some fantastic work on speeds and that kind of thing. And, and also he's got a lot of really good stuff on how to improve your, your paddle technique. But you, yeah, you can't paddle at the speed of the wave. A little bit of momentum and you can use the wave to build speed rather than using your arms. Then another one is people sitting too far out. Yeah, if you sit too far out, the swell is gonna go under you and you're not gonna have any lift. You need to sit at the bus stop where the wave starts to create some lift. And that's determined by, by seeing how much draw is coming from the bottom of the wave. Mm. Not where the wave is sort of cresting, because that can crest for a while before it actually breaks. Yeah, another mistake, and I know that it's one which I do quite a lot, and that is paddling away from the peak. Yeah, a lot of people feel that they're too deep. So they spin and paddle out to sea, paddle back to where they almost started from, and um, have almost just paddled themselves out of position. Yeah. So you, you're better off just check the wave before, see where it breaks, waves come in rhythms and sets, so there's a very good chance that all those waves are gonna break in the same place. Mm. If you've done your homework, you will know where it's gonna break, just positioning is key. Yeah, and then the other big mistake that people make is that when the wave comes, they put their head down and paddle. Oh, so you just lose all your peripheral vision. You don't know what's going on. Uh, it's almost like, imagine driving a car and it's time to accelerate. So you look at the accelerator and you take your eye off the road. Um, you're gonna have an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I hope, you, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Now, one thing that, I, that I'm gonna challenge you to do, and this is something that Clayton got me to do a lot when he's been coaching me, and, to, and now I would say that I'm pretty good at catching waves, and that is the waiting. Don't paddle too early, just sit there and wait for that, that feeling that, and that lift. And once you tap into that, it'll be an absolute game changer. So I challenge you, next time you're out surfing, just practice that waiting for the wave rather than paddling too early. It, it, once you get it, as I say, it's gonna change the game for you. So look, what's been your biggest takeaway from this video? Love to hear it in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you do. Also hit that notification bell. And by the time this video comes out, I'm gonna say that the app should now be ready. There is now an Ombi app. If you go into the App Store, search for Ombi, you can uh, you can get to some great free training on there. There's the Accelerated Surf program. So check out the app. It is on, it's available on Android and on iPhone. So go and check it out and we'll see you in the next video.